The Miami Dolphins offense is rolling right now, but you probably already knew that. Tua Tungavailoa is getting rid of the ball faster than any other quarterback in the league, but on average throwing it farther than any other quarterback in the league, which is a total anomaly, and it shows just how talented this offense is when it comes to the players on the field, but also the coaches who are on the field and in the box. I think that plays like this and how Miami sets them up is really impressive. I want you to first Remember what this big play concept is. We're going to have Tyreek jet out on his little out motion that he's done so much that has become so popularized, but I want you to remember the concept afterwards. We're going to have Tyreek on a vertical route, Durham Smythe on a vertical route, and they're going to take advantage of the underneath space with Barrios, although this time it's a counter. This is the big play that Miami was able to set up through running this play or things similar to it multiple times without even throwing this necessary route in there. I think it's an awesome play from Braxton Berrios, but as I'm going to show you, this isn't the first time that they showed this concept with these two vertical routes and something underneath. This is just the first time they threw it and the first time they threw in the little wrinkle of getting him up the field. In order for you to understand how Miami uses this concept, I want to first show it in combination with another concept. Here, Miami's gonna run at the top of the screen their patented slant wheel. Slant from River Craycraft, the wheel from Eric Azucama. If you look at the result of this play, it's a big gain to Craycraft because there simply aren't many teams in the league who are defending that outward motion. However, when you look at the bottom of the screen, on the field side where Miami likes to run this concept, you're going to see something eerily familiar. You're going to see two vertical clear out routes and then underneath a little drag here from Raheem Mostert. We've got Berrios and Smythe, like I said, running the clear outs and then Mostert running underneath. As you see, they've already run the drag variant of this before. They just hadn't thrown it. Now, although Miami called that play in week one, they also called it in week two. And when Frank Smith was asked about a deep touchdown to Tyreek Hill that had a Durham Smythe orbit motion, which you think might have nothing to do with this conversation, he actually said that maybe you'd seen one play, but you hadn't seen the complementary plays, and this is a prime example of that. This is actually going to be a very similar concept. It's going to be the slant wheel at the top of the screen, and it's going to be the same concept that we've been talking about, these two vertical routes with the underneath route. And look at Miami right here. They're going to generate a decent amount of separation if Tua wanted to throw this ball to Raheem Mostert. He's obviously reading the opposite side of the field, makes a solid throw just out of the reach of Braxton Berrios, but Miami has now shown this play on tape this game as something that they like to run opposite this slant wheel. Now, we know that they counter it later in the game, but this isn't the last time you see a variant of this play. Now, here's where the evolution line for this play gets interesting. This is the closest version of the play to the one that Miami would run later in the game that got that big gain to Varios that I would show you earlier. Here, we're going to have a Tyree kill motion, eerily similar to the one on that later play. And look, as the ball is snapped, we're going to see two vertical-ish routes from Tyree Kill and Durham Smythe. This time, Smythe is going to settle down, try to beat man coverage. We've got Tyree Kill breaking out towards the sticks. But the more interesting thing is, although it has the same effect, look at what Braxton Berrios does. He's going to run a whip route. Rather than the drag underneath the middle of the field, Miami has now shown a different route combination that they're willing to run out of this look. Like I said, complementary plays. Plays that may look the same, but have slight variations as to play different defenses. And Miami has now shown off something else that, you know, New England might think is the counter to that drag route. Oh, it's just going to be a whip route. But they've added an extra layer to it that I am now going to show you. Now here it is, the play you've been waiting for, and the skeleton looks relatively the same. New England thinks that they've seen pretty much every possible variant of this play. As Tyree Kill motions out like the most recent variant you just saw, you might think, we've got Tyree Kill going up the field, Durham Smythe going up the field, and there's going to be a drag, maybe a whip route. Those are the two main things, and Miami hasn't even thrown this yet. So the last thing that's going to be on their mind is that it's not a whip route, it's not a drag route, but it's actually an out and up. Look at the double move from Barrios. Miami set this up all game, and they have the quarterback to go make this throw. Even under pressure, even putting his head down for a split second, Tua stutters, steps up the field, and puts this right 
on Berrios. This is the way that you build up to a big play. Look at Miami. They've thrown the drag route at them. They've thrown the whip route at them. But now they have even a third layer. There are so many different plays in this offense that look so similar. And Frank Smith was trying to tell us that in his press conference. And now we're slowly starting to peel back the layers of how this Dolphins offense works. They have counters to just about everything. And this is a prime example of it. This whip and up by Berrios. I'm really excited to show you guys another way that Miami has countered some plays that's coming up right now. Now, the way that Miami set up this big play was a little bit different because it wasn't in the way that they had different counters in their playbook and how they had certain different variants and complementary plays. This was just taking what the defense gives them and puts in front of them in order to get to their bread and butter later. They faced a lot of three high safety looks, which the NFL doesn't show often, but Bill Belichick was trying to do everything in his power to take away the middle of the field and give up the flats because Miami doesn't throw the flats often. But they're willing to do it if it means that you have to adjust their defense and now give Miami their bread and butter. So look at this first play. We're going to see Savan Ahmed on a jet motion, and this immediately indicates, man, because this safety is running over trying to make this play, and Tua knows this. He knows if you're going to give me the flats, then I'm going to get for free five yards. Bill Belichick was praying that Tua would get antsy, try to force something over the middle of the field, and that's how the Patriots get a lot of quarterbacks, by forcing them to try to make plays, but Tua was really patient, Mike McDaniel was giving him awesome concepts like this, and they're able to just get a little chunk, a little five, six yards, and they're able to do this until they can force New England to do what they want, as I'm going to show you on this next play. Now this play, if I can make my little boxing analogy, is going to be Miami slowly rocking New England to sleep with their little jab so they can make the right hook later and really swing for a bigger play. They know that New England is playing the middle of the field and they're going to give two easy reads to the flats. As this ball is snapped, you're going to see a simple curl flat read, a little stop route from Durham Smythe and a little flat underneath. And the reason they're giving Tua reads like this is they know there's going to be space in the flat, and Tua does a really good job reading space. He's one of the best quarterbacks when it comes to making these short reads, getting the ball out on time, and deciphering where the space is in the defense. And New England hates these little baby gains that Miami keeps getting because they know Miami can inch down the field, and Tua is willing to take these checkdowns. He's not getting antsy. He's going to force you to get antsy, and that's what New England does next when Miami finally takes a swing for their bigger play. Now, this play is the one that Miami was looking for, and as soon as they saw this post-snap look, they knew they had their checkmate because they've thrown the jabs over and over and over again. And this is just two plays later after the last one I showed you, and now New England has had to change up their defensive look because they know that Miami can eat in those flats at any given minute. They're willing to turn those little three, four, five-yard gains. If one of them breaks loose, it might be 30. And Bill Belichick knows that. Look at the snap of this ball and look where these two players immediately go. We're going to have this linebacker immediately moving towards that sideline to go defend the flat. And Tua does a great job manipulating with his eyes. There's no intention to go to Raheem Mostert here because he's only running this little check down route. However, Tua does a great job holding his eyes to the flat. And look at this. We've got one linebacker moving out because he's reading Tua's eyes. And this is where the tendency breaker comes in. Number eight, this linebacker immediately having to go run with Raheem Mostert because he knows the threat that the flats are. But this is the thing. This is exactly the look Miami wanted. They get their off-man coverage, and look at this. Tua with an absolute seed over the middle that was opened up because New England had to make sure that they were protecting those flats this time. Look at these defenders. Miami gets the look that they want. They let this go, and River Craycraft turns this into a really large gain on a drive where Miami wasn't getting a ton of really large gains. This is the kind of stuff that Miami can do. We knew that they had the explosive offense, but we didn't know whether or not they were going to be willing to pick teams apart underneath and be willing to wait for their big plays. But it's plays like this that show how much they were willing to wait and how they're willing to counter to get their big swing. Look at this. We got these two linebackers committing. It's just absolutely beautiful stuff to an on-time 
foot in the dirt, just absolutely ripping this thing to Craycraft. These are the kind of plays I love to see from Miami. They've got a really dangerous offense, and I'm excited to see more of it come Sunday.